Hi guys, this is Andrew with headphones.com. Welcome to the Headphone Show. And today I'm gonna to talk all about noise canceling wireless over ear headphones. And in particular, I've been sort of on a mission to try and find some actually good sounding wireless noise canceling headphones. I'm not expecting to get to you know this level of performance. This is the Sennheiser HD 800S, which of course uh, we we're giving away this month. Uh, check that out in the description below. But if you look at the landscape of you know the wireless noise canceling headphones that are out there, most of them focus on features, not so much sound quality. And because I care a lot about sound quality, obviously. <laughs> uh, that's something that I'm going to be you know, trying to index a little bit harder for here. And so far, I haven't really found the thing that I'm looking for yet, but I have found something very interesting. If you got the joke in the thumbnail, <laughs> uh, then you'll sort of understand what's going on here. And specifically, I'm talking about how something that is ridiculously inexpensive can outperform something that costs $550 in the AirPods Max, or I don't even know how much the Sony is, $350, $400 in the Sony uh, XM4, WH-1000 XM4. And yes, it is the AKG N700 noise canceling Mark II. I wasn't really expecting that much because this is only around $135. So it is orders of magnitude less expensive than these other two. I'm just gonna wait for the crows to stop screaming at each other outside. Anyways, birds are fighting outside, so I'm just gonna keep talking and we'll keep doing this video. Uh, this is a good reason to have noise canceling headphones because then you wouldn't hear the birds outside. Well, you'd still hear them, but I wouldn't. That's, okay, you get the idea. And I'm gonna start with the most expensive one of the bunch, the Apple AirPods Max at $550. And I actually just recently updated the firmware on here to the latest firmware, it's uh, June 2021. I can't remember the exact name of it, but uh, I was hoping that the uh, the firmware update would also improve the sound quality because that's something that they could have done. They could have actually changed the uh, you know, the, the tonal balance just with a firmware update on these. It has that H1 chip and a lot of the sort of smart uh, features that will adjust the sound depending on seal and all, all those things. And so, you know, in theory, you could definitely, uh, you know, change the sound here. And I was hoping that they would improve it because the default frequency response that this headphone has is not particularly good. And this headphone, the AirPods Max, does one thing well, and I'll give it credit, it does that one thing very well, and it is bass. In fact, out of all of these headphones, the AirPods Max, in my opinion, has the best bass. And specifically because it's boosted, but it comes down at an appropriate spot. Uh, and it's, uh, so it doesn't bleed into the mids, it doesn't kind of crowd out the rest of the mix. Um, and so for that quality, the AirPods Max is, is totally fine. However, for just about everything else, uh, the AirPods Max sound quality is not particularly good. In the mids, it's quite recessed in the in the upper mid-range, uh, leading to a very muffled and congested and compressed kind of sound. And then in the treble, it's also very uneven, uh, leading to a very kind of odd, almost kind of like a grainy presentation or hazy presentation up there, which uh, is not to my liking at all. Um, and it just, it feels like you know, they, they didn't really put as much effort into the tuning of this headphone as they did into the rest of the features, like the noise cancelling and, you know, some of the, the 3D audio that you get with some of the Dolby content uh, for, you know, watching Apple TV and movies and stuff like that, uh, which is pretty cool. One other thing that the Apple AirPods Max does well, not to do with sound quality, but to do with uh, the features, is the noise cancelling that it has. Uh, it does attenuate quite a bit of noise. It's a little bit inconsistent there, um, but this is something that it's impressive when you when you try it out first and like say there's a loud you're in a loud environment and it's it's impressive how much this actually attenuates. But apart from that, this is a headphone that doesn't really, uh, it, it's not really worth the price in my opinion at $550. And there are a lot of people who are out there you know, hyping it up and saying this is the best noise canceling headphone out there, the best of the worst and that kind of stuff. I, I really don't hear it that way. I actually find that the technical performance here as well, you know, apart from the frequency response, and we're talking about all the other sort of intangible qualities like soundstage and macro, macro dynamics, macro contrast and detail and micro dynamics and small gradations of volume and all that stuff, separation qualities, it's not very good on this. In particular, this is a very smeared kind of presentation for the imaging. I think that's sort of the most noticeably unpleasant aspect of the uh, technical performance. Um, the the micro detail is not really there either, but that I don't really have that high a bar for for these types of headphones. Um, interestingly, the uh, the Sennheiser Momentum is one of the ones that actually is okay there, uh, surprisingly. And the PXC 550 Mark II. Those are the only two so far that I've heard that have had any sense of you know technical performance. Uh, but yeah, it's it's not very good on the AirPods Max. Now, let's move over to the Sony uh, WH-1000 XM4. This one, 
Also doesn't have very good technical performance, but the one thing I'm going to say uh, is in its favor here is it does have somewhat of a decent soundstage. Out of all of these uh, noise cancelling headphones that I've heard, the soundstage on the XM4 was the least uh, claustrophobic. Um, it's obviously still a closed back headphone, so you're not going to get that s same sort of sense of openness that you get from a HD 100S. That's a totally unfair comparison. Someone's definitely going to click on this video and then see the HD 100S here and then freak out about the fact that there's also a whole bunch of noise cancelling headphones. You know, why are we comparing any of these against the HD100S? I'm not. I'm not comparing it against the HD100S or any open back headphone. I'm just comparing wireless noise cancelling headphones. For these types of headphones, again, I don't really have that high of an expectation. Um, the big problem with the Sony WH-1000XM4, though, is that the default frequency response here is basically set up in store demo mode. Like, I, I don't... I, I honestly don't think that the expectation was to use this with its default frequency response. I, I can't imagine that's the case because it is so ridiculous uh, in the bass and it's just like the bass just dominates everything and bleeds, you know, crowds out the rest of the mix. And you can see it in the frequency response as well. And then there's also like a, a series of weird bumps in the mids. The whole the mid range is withdrawn and then there's this, a series of sort of peaks and dips that are fairly uneven, and then the treble's also a little bit spicy. So I really think that you have to use the app with this to get it to sound somewhat good. And when you do use the app, you can get it kind of close. Um, and I, I've left a preset there for you guys to check out if you own this headphone. Um, it's It definitely improves it a lot. And uh, it's, it's to the point where, you know, with that preset, yeah, it's still not ideal, but it's certainly a lot better than the default. The one other sort of criticism here that I'm gonna give to this headphone is, where the in the software when you're doing the EQ function you can't specify which air which frequency ranges you're actually adjusting so there's a series of set preset ones that you can adjust but you can't just input the like with the ones that it actually needs to have adjustment at like that sort of mid-range unevenness you can't really fix that and then also um, you know where the big base mid base bloat is you can't truly fix that either So you're, you're always gonna have a little bit of that in there Even if you reduce the clear base because that that seems to only reduce it below like, you know 80 Hertz Which is kind of the base that you do want again. That's where the AirPods max does it better now to the to the credit of the Sony W H 1000 XM4 Jesus the names uh, to the credit of the Sony here it, You know, it's so awesome that it does have an app that is very easy to use and has a lot of functionality in it, uh, including that EQ functionality. In my opinion, any of these noise cancelling headphones, wireless feature rich headphones, they need to have an app. Like I think if you don't have an app, you're just not even on the same playing field. Like you're not, like the AirPods Max here, it doesn't really have an, a, any sort of EQ adjustability. Like yes, I know you can go into the accommodation settings and change some of the stuff there, but it never really is the kind of customization that you really need to be able to get it to sound good. And uh, with the Sony WH-1000XM4, not only do you get an app that allows you to, you know, customize the EQ here, but you also get to uh, retain that EQ preset when you pair it with multiple devices. So when I'm running this off of my phone, I can, uh, you know, create my adjustment there, my custom profile, and then I can also be connected to my computer or my laptop or whatever, and it'll still retain the custom EQ preset that I created. So that's really, really awesome with the... Uh, WH-1000XM4 here. Um, with the AirPods Max, you can connect it, uh, you can pair it with multiple devices and it does seamlessly transition from one to the other, but it doesn't actually stay paired with the same, with multiple devices the way that the Sony does. So even if it did have adjustability there, you would lose that when you moved over to the next device, or at least uh, unless they add some sort of software to allow you to be able to do that. But uh, in my opinion, it's just, it's completely lost out on that competitive aspect that the Sony does have. And speaking of noise cancelling, I still think that the noise cancelling on the Sony is better. Like, it's almost as if the amount that the AirPods Max attenuates is the same, but the Sony's is more consistent. So right away, the most expensive wireless noise cancelling headphone that I've had a chance to evaluate, which is the AirPods Max, so far, I mean, I know there's some other ones out there and maybe we'll get to those eventually, but so far the AirPods Max has been probably the most disappointing um, only because it doesn't have some of these features that I think are essential in a headphone. Like with the AirPods Max, they've sort of gone with this approach of like, we're not gonna let anybody customize anything because we know better. It's just that it turns out they don't know better. 
uh, in the tuning of this headphone. And I actually think they did a much better job with the AirPods Pro. If you're in the Apple ecosystem, I wouldn't get this one. I would just get the AirPods Pro because uh, it's they're well a more convenient, b more comfortable, and c they sound better. You know, I, I do think this does attenuate more. So like if that's if you're really trying to get like the most noise canceling aspect, then yeah, of course it does noise cancel more. Now. Let's get to the one that has surprised me, and the reason why I'm doing this quick comparison here uh, with the uh, the AKG N700. Um, man, I've I've been so surprised with this headphone for what you get for the money when it comes to both sound quality and features. Let me just get this out of the way here with the N700. The noise canceling attenuation for this headphone is not on the level of either of the other two. There's no noise floor here that I can tell. Not, not, nothing meaningful, uh, but even just like when I was comparing the amount that it attenuated in this room with the air conditioner on, um, you know, it was significantly better on both of the other two. The one extra consideration there is that with the AKG, the noise cancelling does take a little bit to sort of kick in, uh, and then it, it's almost as if it needs to kind of get used to your environment, and then uh, it's, it starts to activate, and then the and then it actually does reduce it reasonably well. Um, so if you're evaluating this headphone, you know, if in person or something like that, and you're trying to test the noise cancelling, you got to give it like a good 10, 15 seconds in that environment to get the proper like sense of how much it's actually attenuating. But even still, like at its best, it's still not on the level of these other two. However, I took this out just, you know, walking around uh, downtown and I was in my neighborhood with car sounds and traffic by Main Street. And the low frequency attenuation was pretty good on this. Again, not for intermittent sounds, but like for the general sort of, you know, roar of a street. Uh, for, for low frequency stuff, it was pretty good. But it was with, high with the high frequency stuff that it wasn't really that great. Like you do still hear sort of that shh, you know, when a car goes by. Again, I'm thinking this is maybe a little bit closer to what you get with one of those, you know, uh, true wireless uh, in-ears for the ones that are noise canceling, like the AirPods Pro and uh, the Sony uh, WF-1000 XM3 and XM4, which I will have a review coming soon. It's over there. But this is $135, and so I don't really expect the craziest noise canceling here either. And the benefit is that for sound quality, this destroys the other two. So let me describe the frequency response here. Uh, the bass is boosted, definitely a little too much for my liking. Um, so you'll notice that in my graphs, I use the uh, I use the 2013 Harman bass instead of the 2018 one. I think this is actually a little, even a little bit boosted over the 2018 Harman bass. Um, by the way, uh, if anybody's unaware, AKG is a Harman company, and so it's totally unsurprising that uh, this would be tuned to this target. Um, and uh, they, they definitely did nail it. Um, so I think Sean Olive should be happy. He's the one in the thumbnail, if anybody's unaware. <laughs> but yeah, the bass, it's boosted here. Um, and so if anybody wants, you know, strong, intense bass, this sure has it. Uh, and then I also think it's a little bit boosted there, like in the mid bass, a little too much for my liking. So uh, I do kind of curb that with the app. And I'll, I'll get to that as well. Uh, but then for the rest of the frequency response, you know, there's it's a little bit uneven there in the mids at, at times, but you don't really hear that. It doesn't come across in any, you know, weird way. Basically, you get an even tonal balance without any weird, you know, harmonic boosts or anything like that. There's there's nothing that's overshadowing anything else in the mix. Um, and yeah, you get a, a solid frequency response, a solid tuning. Now, when it comes to the technical performance of this headphone, uh, it's also not very good. I'm not going to say that it, that's better than either of the other two. Like, for technical performance, they, they're they all mediocre at best, but there are certain things that they do worse than others. So, for example, on the AirPods Max, the imaging is quite smeared. On the uh, Sony XM4, the soundstage is decent, but the, the overall level of detail is not very good. And then on the uh, AKG here, the soundstage isn't, it's a, it's a tighter presentation, but there's a little bit of a limitation there on clarity for trailing ends of tones or sort of a bluntedness for, for the transients there that, that comes across. You know, I was comparing the AKG K371, that's the wired headphone that they make, and it's definitely more detailed. Like, I don't think that's particularly detailed either, but the technical performance there is clearly better than this uh, for, at least for trailing ends of tones and clarity for trailing ends of tones. Now, not everybody is sensitive to that. I know a lot of people who just don't hear that stuff, like there's some people out there who only hear basically what you see in the tonal balance and the frequency response. And my response to that is, well, just listen harder. 
you can do it. I believe you can do it. When you get to you know hear this kind of stuff, those qualities start to be a little bit more obvious. For a lot of people who are more used to these types of headphones, you're not really gonna miss out on that as much. But again, it's kind of like once you've heard something, it's difficult to unhear it and then you, you go back and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> it's definitely missing something there. So really, if you're looking for the last the level of detail and stuff like that, uh, I, I don't think any of these would really be the way to go. Um, again, the closest thing that I've heard so far is the uh, Momentum 3, but there are reasons you might not want to get the Momentum 3 either. But the one thing, again, that the AKG does so much better than these other two is the frequency response. And this is the one where, I'm, where I was testing it on the rig and I was listening to it and I was like, man, this is legit. This thing is actually legit. I'm so impressed that they were able to do this at $135. And here's the crazy thing about this headphone. You know how before I was ranting and raving about how the Sony can be paired to multiple devices at the same time and has an EQ app and the AirPods Max doesn't? Well, well, yeah, I can pair with multiple devices at the same time, but like you get what I mean, right? Like the EQ preset applies on this to multiple devices and it doesn't on the AirPods Max. Well, because there is no EQ function. Uh, well, on the AKG N700, not only does it have an app with EQ functionality, but uh, it, you can also pair this with multiple devices at the same time, and the EQ software retains its profile on all devices, on both devices at the same time. Which I was kind of, I was like shocked that it was able to do this because there's other wireless noise canceling headphones that I've been evaluating that uh, couldn't do that. You know, they couldn't be paired with multiple devices at the same time. And lastly, the crazy thing about this is that for the, for the EQ software, it's a little bit ironic, but for the EQ software with the N700, you actually get to adjust where the different ranges are. You can actually specify you know, which elements of the frequency response you want to adjust and by how much. And, and none of these other wireless noise canceling headphones can do it, including the Sennheiser. The Sennheiser only has three filters. The Sony has like five, five or six maybe. Uh, the AirPods Max has none except for those accommodation presets. So the fact that the AKG N700 has a much more flexible EQ software is, is amazing in my opinion. And also a little bit, again, ironic because it's not like it really needs any of it. It's like they were like, yeah, we're going to tune this exceptionally well and then give you all the customization. <laughs> if only the AirPods Max had tuned it like this, then we would have something where they'd have they'd be able to sort of say, yeah, no, we didn't need to do, we didn't need to give you software or EQ adjustability because we did it right. Because the AKG did do it right. Now, there is, of course, the big question about, you know, the Harman target and, uh, you know, should everything be tuned to the Harman target? My answer, of course, is no. But with these types of headphones, absolutely, at least above 1K. You know, I don't think it's too much to ask that you get to what most people prefer above 1K where the ear is amplifying those frequencies. And this is why in the frequency response charts you see a rise there, um, at, you know, between 1 and, like, you know, 9k and that's kind of close to what the brain expects to hear and so getting it close to that is essential in my opinion uh you know you can add whatever flavor or character you want but that element getting some sort of ear gain there is is definitely a requirement and uh you know the sony did does it quite poorly and the airpods max doesn't do it at all so you know <laughs> with the akg n700 they nailed it they absolutely nailed it. There's a few other noise canceling headphones that I want to cover and some other ones I want to get in as well. There's one from Jabra that looks quite interesting. Um, obviously the Sennheiser Momentum 3, the Razer Opus, the Bose 700. Yeah, I'm going to try and get to the bottom of what of the answer to, you know, what is the best sounding noise canceling headphone. And so far, the cheapest one, the $135 one is in the lead. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Thanks for taking the time to watch it and I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.